What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to Stocks and Man, the Numbers. And today I wanted to do a quick update about a company that we spoke about. We had a lot of hype about that really, uh, you know, I mean, it had an initial pop after the video, but it kind of sold off and basically got back to where it was. So what the hell's going on? Name of the company we're talking about, Under Armour Incorporated, ticker symbol UAA here on the New York Stock Exchange. Company down 20 cents, about 2.7% here on the day, sitting at 7.18 a share. Now, after we made the video talking about bouncing off the double bottom at 697, the stock was breaking out of this uh, descending wedge, and we saw a pop up to about 844, as you see, top of the screen, the O, the H, the L, the C. That's the open, the high, the low, the close. And you can see the high was 844. So if you happen to get in and apparently get out above $8, hey, listen, congratulations. However, again, to remind you, this was more of a long-term investment, not necessarily a short-term trade. And uh, again, I know a lot of people are asking about it. You're probably very upset that you're in a stagnant position here. But again, long term investment, not a short term trade. So what we're seeing here now is that this was a channel we were in going all the way back to the beginning of May after we chunked down here. We've been in this channel. And as we see here now, the stock is now below this bottom trend line. So now one of two things are going to happen. Either A, we're going to pop back up above it tomorrow and get back on track, or B, it is going to continue to pull back and potentially form the triple bottom at 697 before taking off again. Now, I know that some of Under Armour's numbers came out here um, a couple of weeks ago, August 8th, as we see here, beat on the top and bottom lines. And uh, more importantly... Uh, we had some positives and we had some negatives. You know, they do mention that certain areas like the international business has increased. Certain areas uh, like the North American business has actually taken a little bit of a hit there on the revenue side. But in my opinion, see, the problem is they kind of all move together when they really shouldn't. And that's really the one issue you're dealing with when you're talking about apparel and footwear companies like this. Right. Because today, as you see here. No news recently, you know, they mentioned China here about a week ago, but before that it was just earnings, right? So in the last three weeks, they really didn't mention anything, but then boom, they want to let you know that Dick Sporting has taken an absolute massive hit today. I think it's down roughly 25%, and, uh, you know, why not just pull all the rest of the apparel and footwear companies down with it? So that's really one of the issues you're dealing with here with Under Armour, because even looking at the numbers, we still know, in my opinion anyway, that the stock is tremendously undervalued. Uh, the company did close to $6 billion in revenue last year, telling me they only have a market cap of $3 billion with a PE of sub-9. So when we saw the run up to almost 8.5, it was 110% justified and exactly what I thought we would see going into earnings. And then as the numbers came out, as you see here, stock was at about maybe seven and three quarters, and it jumped up to this fib of 812 and then rejected, kind of remained stagnant, and has since been pulling back here. And uh, again, in my opinion, I still say long term it could work out. And this is why, again, you have to kind of deal with this short term negativity. So right now, I'm not necessarily sure if I would say add to the position because we're kind of in limbo here again. So I would wait for a confirmation back above this trend line to continue upward going into next quarter earnings, early November estimates, or uh, I would wait for a potential pullback to this level of 697 and see if it forms the triple bottom to bounce off of and begin to start running back into the eights and the nines potentially. So if we do look at some of the numbers here, again, it, it was kind of mixed they did beat earnings, uh, however, year over year, as you see here, net revenue came in ahead of uh, consensus estimates of 1.29, uh, but fell 2% on year over year basis. So that's why some of it was good, some of it was bad. Wholesale revenues decreased, direct to consumer revenues inched up 4%. So again, I, I think also... Uh, the direct-to-consumer revenue is going to help drive this stock higher as well as people, uh, you know, don't really like going to the mall anymore or doing, uh, you know, really running any of these errands that we don't have to if we can simply, uh, you know, just get everything delivered to our homes. But 
you know, again, some good, some bad. Recorded 3% growth in owned and operated store revenue. Right, and as you see here, apparel down 5%, footwear up 5%. So a little bit of a mixed bag here. And as you see, North America revenue decreased 9%. Revenue international business increased 12%. So <clears throat> that's why I'm saying we're, we're a little bit of a mixed bag here. EMEA jumped 10.5%, right? 14.5% in Asia Pacific, 12.7% in Latin America. So we do have some goods. We do have some bads. But again, overall, I do feel that the company is still undervalued. And again, even going back the last couple of quarters, you know, the company has technically been consistently beating earnings, both on the EPS side and on the revenue side. So again, it might take some time, might take longer than usual, but we're looking for a rebound back above that trend line just to keep this like slow and steady upward momentum going. And uh, in my opinion, I'm really not seeing a reason why this can't get back to $9, $10 and we could potentially see, again, we hit this top of 844 here before these earnings. So we could potentially see even a higher top, you know, maybe 944 uh, going into this quarter's earnings in early November. And you can see estimates back up to the north of the one and a half billion mark. And they recently reported one three. And before that was just about one four. So, you know, some quarters obviously are better than others when it comes to these apparel, these footwear companies. But overall, again, still beating estimates, uh, coming in above EPS expectations the last several quarters, doing decent on revenue. And, you know, I'm sure they are struggling here and there. But in my opinion, I still do feel, again, that this stock is undervalued. And, um, you know, I, I would I would just wait for confirmation if you're looking to potentially take a new position or add to the position. I would personally wait for confirmation, but that's just me, you know. But uh, I still like it. I still like it. I may be crazy, right? I mean, uh, I may be crazy, but I still like it. And I know that a lot of you liked it as well. And we're going to bring down stock charts here. And let's see if this is showing us anything. We switch over here to stock charts, and we can see now on this on this drop, look at this RSI now down to sub-35. Last time it was that low was the end of May. So we could potentially have a bounce here, even though the MACD does to be kind of, appears to be kind of con continuously slipping down. And it's a shame that we had this big drop here. Uh, yesterday and today as well, because it did look like the MACD was actually about to cross on the daily and potentially bring the stock back up into the eights. But something like this 200 day moving average here at about $9, I, I do think it's very feasible, but again, may just take longer than anticipated. If we switch over here, random ad, if we switch over here on the weekly, you can see kind of a similar situation here. We have an RSI coming down now. Uh, sub 39, not the lowest it was back in the day. However, the lowest it's been in uh, several months, really, since the stock has started moving. Uh, the MACD looks relatively flat. Looks like it may be trying to cross here to the downside. Only time is going to tell. Bottom Bollinger Band on the weekly 663. I really don't think that this stock deserves to see that level. So, that's why I keep saying, look out for that trend line, look out for the confirmation, see where it closes here today. And um, I, I really do believe worst case scenario should be potentially back down to that 697. But, you know, I, I really don't think it deserves to be down this much. But, you know, rejected right around the mid Bollinger Band there. You can see it was holding there for several, several weeks and now just broke down. But, uh, this moving average here, the 50 day on the weekly 877 and the 200 day on the daily was about $9. So that's why I still feel in my opinion that we're, we're going to get back up to that $9 level. Um, and even going back here, you can see if you draw this trend line across where we're kind of, that's the trend line we were looking at here. And you can see that we're kind of still staying above it. And even though it's a bitch, you know, we are slowly trending higher and also right here, we're looking at a pivot point. As we see here on the daily, we had a support level at seven and a quarter. And you can see that the stock today 
has broken that level and is sitting down here at 716. So that's why I'm saying, uh, you know, either it could immediately pop back up and start to rally back to where it was, or it could potentially have one or two more red days drop down potentially into the high sixes and then have that bounce and start to run up from there. So unfortunately, you know, not exactly what we wanted to see from Under Armour. Um, I am happy that they beat earnings again. I'm happy that we had good timing with the double bottom and the uh, and the wedge and seeing that pop come out to almost eight and a half, right? So everyone uh, could have potentially made a couple of bucks in the short term. But again, you know, I, I do feel this potentially may be a longer term play. And, you know, it may be slow, it may be boring, it may not be that exciting, but, you know, even here from these low seven levels, you know, we turn around several months down the road, all of a sudden the stock's back at like 10, 10 and a half. You're not going to say, oh, I remember when I bought it, it took, you know, five, six weeks to start moving. No, you're going to say, holy shit, we bought this thing back at, you know, 710, 720 a share. Now we're at, uh, you know, 1040. So, boom, I just made like 50%, uh, you know, on this situation. And, again, you know, it may seem boring. Uh, believe me, I get it. I understand it. But, again, going back to, uh, I did a couple of update videos recently last week. And going back to some of the calls that I made, like U.S. Steel, like Southern Copper, SCCO, all of those situations... Uh, basically worked out over time. Those companies, of course, were paying you dividends over the last uh, 10, 12 months to own them, and Under Armour does not pay a dividend. Uh, however, again, you could potentially see the same situation here. So wait for confirmation. Make sure it doesn't completely shit the bed and drop down to this trend line here at, at low $6. Of course, markets trending downward. Yields were rising. Today, everything is red, but yesterday, everything was green. So like we say, what goes up must come down. And, uh, you know, that's what we're seeing here. So this is our key level here. And again, 697 potentially forming the triple bottom could be coming in play. So going to have to keep an eye on this one again. It, it's, it's hard to predict what's going to happen. It is much easier to react to what is happening and to react to what the market is giving us. That's why I always say, don't force trades, take what the market gives you, right? And again, it may suck that you may have to sell the position if it breaks these levels and take a small loss, but uh, I, I still do believe if you have the time and if you can stomach the volatility and, you know, God willing, you have some other positions that are doing well for you, then hopefully this is not too much of a red flag for you and your portfolio. And, uh, you know, you can continue to uh, hold and hopefully have a climb inside of maybe potentially inside of the next three to six months. We can start to see uh, nine and change and potentially double digits and get back above $10 again. But again, overall, kind of a mixed bag. I really expected more. Uh, but of course, I made the video, and when the stock should have really ran, as we see here, <clears throat> August 8th, and as we see, August has been a very rough month. So, that, you know, the, the, this is what I mean. This is why I get upset, when, and I get emotional, really, when I talk about the fake, pumped-up markets, because if the fake-ass bullshit random rally did not happen in June or July, and we stayed relatively flat, even if we didn't pull back, if we just stayed flat, then what you would have seen, chances are, is that since these this earnings beat, this stock would be up and not down. And of course, the last couple of days, the stock has taken a hit. The markets have been extremely volatile. And now, of course, as I mentioned, they all move together for some reason. And Dick Sporting Goods taking a big hit today, down around 25%. So why not pull down all of the other companies as well? So in my opinion, that's basically what we're seeing here. And uh, yeah, yeah. unfortunately, you have to wait for confirmation on this trend line. And uh, it is what it is, right? So, you know, just wanted to do a quick update here on Under Armour because I know a lot of people agreed with me. When I made the video, they, you know, they felt I was on the right track and this could work out well for everybody. 
And, uh, of course, we are seeing some stagnation here taking place. So I do still have faith. Uh, just might take a little bit longer, right? But I'll end it there. So once again, stocks by the numbers. I want to thank guests for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down in the comment section. Use it very quick to reply. Thumbs up algorithm helps me get more eyes on the channel, helps me get more views. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. That is our handshake agreement. I will do updates on, you know, SoundHound, Under Armour. I'll bring you uh, any potential short-term plays I might have, like those Apple puts. If you go back to my Apple video, again, I may have been early when I first spotted it, and I did mention that it could take till the end of July before it breaks that wedge, and that's kind of exactly what happened. And unfortunately, again, that is why I also hate fake bullshit pump-ups. Because something like the Apple puts would have worked out much, much sooner if the NASDAQ and the tech sector was not simply just green no matter what every single freaking day for about those two months straight during the summer. And uh, miraculously now, all of a sudden, everything sucks and everything's too high and everything has to sell off. So this is why I, I consistently mentioned even going all the way back to my first videos over a year ago when I started the channel, this is why I mentioned to you guys, in a fake, bullshit, uncertain, volatile market, it is much, much more difficult to make returns as opposed to when the market reacts realistically and actually takes this economic data into account and reacts properly. So, unfortunately, again, we're dealing with a little bit of a market sell-off here. Yields have been rising, and uh, certain companies, certain sectors are kind of taking the brunt of it. But, again, this is our trend line, and look for that bounce. But going off on a tangent here, but bringing up a lot of the older plays, you know, been making some good calls, and I have no problem if you guys want to join the Discord, you want to get some uh, short-term day trades, some scalp trades on the indexes. Uh, made a couple of good calls today uh, after the open. And, uh, you know, I'll do all that for you guys. Just do me a favor. Handshake agreement. You want to take the recommendations. You want to absorb the knowledge. You want to, you know, watch the content. Entertain yourself here. No problem. Just do me a favor. Push the subscribe button. That is how you help me help you. But moving forward, more importantly, like I do always say, I understand that markets are rocky and they're volatile and they are very uncertain. So I want to wish all of you success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. Thanks for stopping by. Hope this helped a little bit. And uh, catch you guys in the next vid.